The construction of the right house section begins with building the bases. Now on our page three of the cutting guide are all the pieces listed for the right house section and we're going to come down here a little bit to begin with and we'll see the front base top and bottom and then the front base sides, there's four of those and then there's a front base support and it's a little bit different from the sides, it's a sixteenth of an inch shorter that's because the base, I'm um, sorry, the bottom of the base gets inset and then for the back base it's a little bit smaller, so the top and bottom you can see are a little bit smaller than the front base. The back and front are of course the same length and the sides are a little bit shorter. So those are all the pieces that we're going to be needing for the bases. Now, for in the right house section there are two parts. One is stationary and one is movable. And in order for those two to connect together we're going to again use some magnets like similar to how we did in the tower. So the first thing we want to do before we construct the bases is insert those magnets and we'll put one in the front base and one in the back base. And so what I've done here is I've marked out on one of the back base sides. I've marked in three-eighths of an inch from the left and then I've drawn a center line and this is where I'm going to place my magnet. So I'm just going to draw myself a little guideline to cut out. And as you recall from the tower section, I like to cut in a little bit on the chipboard just so that the magnets are nice and flush with the surface. Again I'm using um, the low profile basic gray 3 8 of an inch magnets and they stand about a 32nd of an inch tall so if I dig out about halfway through the chipboard um, I can get that magnet nice and inset and flush with the surface of the chipboard. So I've just gone around in a circle, you could go around in a square and just like we did for the tower I'm going to dig out uh, a layer of this chipboard in here. It's a little messy to begin with but it'll clean out. Depends on if you get your craft knife in just the right place can sometimes get a nice clean layer to come out. Obviously that isn't what happened to me this time, but it'll all clean up nicely. Okay, so that looks that looks pretty good. And so I have both a plus and a minus magnet over here. And I'm going to they have an adhesive on the back. and I'm removing the backing. Then I'll just use a little dot of adhesive underneath just to reinforce that uh, glue that's on the magnet. And I'm just using some diamond glaze. You could use glossy accents as well. And then putting that magnet in so that's nice and flush there. And then we want to place this magnet in exactly the same place on the front. Uh, you can, if I can see my measurements were, were, were good here, so I think I can just go ahead and, and draw my uh, circle on. The other way you can do it is if you take oh, a couple of pieces of just scrap paper. This is just some of the scrap pattern paper I have here. And you take off just the backing on the adhesive here. Sometimes a little easier said than done. There we go. Then we allow that magnet to 
uh, search and find the, the magnet that we've already installed. And then if you get your pieces aligned, and just kind of press where to engage that magnet. The reason for putting two pieces of uh, cardstock or, or pattern paper in here is so that you can slip your finger between the two and that magnet doesn't shift. And then you can just trace around the magnet and then you'll get them exactly in the same place. So I'll do that and get this side prepped as well. So I finished putting the magnet into the front base and so I'm going to put the back base uh, to the side and start by constructing the front base. And this is a simple matter of uh, butt joints for the top and the four sides. So you want to make sure that you can that you do not see the magnet when you go to put this together and when we go to put it together that magnet should be uh, oriented in this this fashion so that it is towards the right of uh, the top so and then I'll take my other four pieces that are an inch and a quarter inch high and I'll just butt these up together put construction strips on there and then I'll be back so I have joined the four sides to the top and I've also added some little tabs of joining strips to on one side of each of the corners so that I'll be all ready to bring them together and make the box. Now before I do that I want to add this support strip in the middle and we only have this in the front one just because there is some weight to the um, upper structure and I, th I thought it would be good to have some extra support in here. So what I've done is I found the edge that has the magnet just by flipping this over and then I'm drawing a line three inches in on the top just measured three inches in from the uh, edge of the top and then I drew a line that extends all the way across both sides and then we're going to, I've prepped the support piece and you remember this one is the one that's 1 16th of an inch shorter I've prepped that with some joining strips on all of its sides so that we can put this on here it doesn't matter which side you line that up on of the line we just made but We'll just get that in there and go ahead and give that a burnish. Now one thing I didn't have on the cutting guide but I'll go and add it um, and make a little edit so you'll have it is it'll be a lot easier to inset this bottom section if there's something on the edges for you to put some glue on I think. So I've just got some of extra of my uh, quarter inch chipboard strips and what I'm going to do is just cut some pieces to go on the edges of these sides and hold them back about a sixteenth of an inch from the unattached edge and that will give you some gluing surface for insetting the bottom of the base. Now the reason we drew extended this line all the way across here for the support piece as you can see when it comes up here that you wouldn't be able to have one of these strips going all the way across it would interfere with that so just on the sides with the line just put two shorter pieces in and you don't have to run them continuously anyway but just you definitely have to have two pieces on these sides where the support strip comes up 
So I'm going to cut those and glue those in and then I'll be back. So I've added all of my little um, strips here and if you're not good at judging that sixteenth of an inch you certainly can take a, a, a scrap piece of chipboard and hold that on that edge and use that as a guide for where to put your strips at. And the other thing is we still need to join these corners so hopefully you can see this here. I've held at the corners where the joining strips still have to come in. I've held uh, the little support strip back so that um, it won't interfere with the joining strips on each one of these corners here. So um, now we're ready to make it into a box. I folded these tabs in on the support strips so that they won't engage prematurely and I'll just work my way around. The corners just kiss. They don't overlap at all so watch that as you put them together. Try to get the bottom uh, in alignment as well. And then, well, get this support strip in straight. Remember, it should be sitting down about a sixteenth of an inch from that edge as well. And then I'll give everything a good burnish. Okay, and now our base should fit nicely inside of there. And we should, you might need to use your point of your X-Acto to, you know, open up something a little bit, but it should fit nice inside and all these corners flush so that you can just um, run a bead of glue around the edges here and on the support piece and put this in and let that dry. So here I have my uh, front base all put together. I have it, this is the inset bottom on um, facing bottom. This is the top that we can see the little edges on on the top here. And in order to make sure that we get the back base uh, assembled correctly, this is what I'd suggest that you do. We have, I have the magnet facing right this way and what I'm going to do is hold this edge with its magnet so it's facing. Now I know I want the top to come in just like this up at the top so if I have them this way then I can flip it and now I know when I put this together I will have the magnet oriented in the proper way. So I'll just add my other sides on here and proceed just like I did with the uh, front base except there's no support piece in the center. So the last thing we want to do to prep the front base is to add some patterned paper uh, to the front section of this because it will become the front porch of the house. So we'll add that paper to the front section and the way you know uh, which section to do it is the side opposite the magnet. So I have the magnet on this back side here so I'm going to put my paper right here so I'm just going to remind myself by putting paper across here. So 
normally I like to to wrap at least three eighths of an inch on on each side here, but uh, I'm going to use this paper from the six inch pad, so there's not quite that amount, but I think it's going to be okay. If you were using um, some other paper, I would suggest cutting it at three inches by six and three eighths, three by six and three eighths, and then you could have a half inch score on three sides to wrap down uh, around the edges. Now, because this is only six inches wide, I'm still going to cut it three inches. But then, for my scoring, I'll have a half an inch on the front side. And this paper is directional, so I'm paying attention to that. And so this now is five and three eighths inch wide. So we have a six minus five and three eighths. We have five eighths of an inch left. So one side is going to get a quarter inch score. And one side is going to get a three eighths inch score. And then we'll fold those edges in and give them a burnish. And then we'll just make a couple of little cuts and it might be easier to see on this front side. We're coming in along the crease that we just made. This is where I've made those two cuts. Hopefully you can see you can see those two cuts there. So I'm going to put um, score tape around the edges here to wrap and then we'll put some good score tape on here. Uh, the front wall of the house will be coming down on here so I'll probably put about an inch wide tape over on this section just to make sure I've got my abundant score tape going on there. And then when I wrap this I'm going to first hit these these edges that I'll, this top edge that will show when it wraps with, with just some black ink so that I'll tuck the short sides down first and then wrap these longer sides around. And I think actually before I do that I'll just come and knock these back a little bit just kind of cutting off an angle and then I'll redo this inking here. Okay, so let me do that. So I have my score tape added to my pattern paper. I'm going to just remove this uh, front edge to begin with. Get it folded down and then I can hold the, the two edges where they need to go and just kind of back this in till it lines up with that front edge. And now I can remove the remainder of the backing and secure it down.